our problem is not an American problem, it's a human problem. It's not a Negro problem, it's a problem of humanity. It's not a problem of civil rights, but a problem of human rights. For many African Americans, the end of the Civil War brought lifelong dreams into reality. But the freedmen were far from securing their basic human rights. Brilliant educators and forerunners for widespread change, two men envisioned opposing paths to the same mountaintop. Although Booker T. Washington's accommodationist model limited black potential for equality, it sparked W.E.B. Du Bois to develop his activist model. Using Du Bois' activism, leaders achieved success in protests from the Montgomery bus boycotts to the March on Selma. Hundreds of years of coercive labor had left the freedmen unprepared and unequipped to survive. In his autobiography, Up From Slavery, Former slave Booker Taliaferro Washington recounts the ambivalence of emancipation, saying, The great responsibility of being free, of having charge of themselves, of having to think and plan for themselves and their children, seemed to take possession of them. Emancipation was followed by a period of Southern Reconstruction. Certain aspects of African American life did improve, but by the early 1880s, Reconstruction had lost federal support. Uh, when the Northern Army pulled out after 10 years, uh, then we went right back into what's called post-Reconstruction and a kind of quasi-slavery and the renewal of, of terrorism. Surrounding this chaos, one major question plagued the nascent black intelligentsia. How to lead the formerly enslaved African American. The Atlanta Cotton Exposition of 1895 brought one of the earliest and most prominent answers to this question. Booker T. Washington delivered a speech to a predominantly white audience. Those of my race who underestimate the importance of cultivating friendly relations with a southern white man who is their next door neighbor, I would say, cast down your bucket where you are. He, he urged African Americans, said, look, don't worry about the vote. You know, don't worry about equality right now. What we need to do is build ourselves up economically, prove ourselves, and then over time, over time we will get what we want. He advocated an industrial education for the black youth rather than a liberal arts education, striving to prepare them for life as laborers rather than as intellectuals. In return, he asked that the white leaders sponsor this free industrial education and allow blacks due process of law. Washington's speech was met with harsh criticism from intellectuals of the North. Sociologist and statistical analyst William Edward Burgart Du Bois felt that Washington's approach unnecessarily conceded African Americans' human rights, coining Washington's proposal the Atlanta Compromise. And Du Bois, in his list of charges, he says, well, you know, what's the result of what you're saying? The year after, we get Plessy vs. Ferguson, right? Um, Supreme Court embraced segregation. In his collection of essays, The Souls of Black Folk, Du Bois connected Washington's speech to three principal detriments to the Southern Black community. One, the disenfranchisement of the Negro. As Washington had conceded the right for blacks to vote, the years after his speech saw a sharp decline in African American voters. 2. The legal creation of a distinct status of civil inferiority for the Negro. Three years after Washington's speech, a newly elected black mayor was violently overthrown by white Democrats in Wilmington, North Carolina, the only coup d'etat in the history of the United States. Three. The steady withdrawal of aid from institutions for the higher training of the Negro. While white entrepreneurs did funnel money into Washington's Tuskegee Institute, increasing its annual endowment from $2,000 to $1.5 million, funds were diverted from black liberal arts institutions, leaving the African American community at a critical intellectual disadvantage. In 1905, Twelve black intellectuals met at Niagara Falls to discuss the growing need for a nationwide activist organization to oppose Washington's accommodationism. 
In his Declaration of Principles, Du Bois states, We believe that this class of American citizens should protest emphatically and continually against the curtailment of their political rights. Out of Du Bois' Niagara movement emerged the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or NAACP. Recent evidence uncovered by Lewis Harlan shows that Washington did engage in activism in ways that he was safely able to. He criticized segregation using pseudonyms and letters to newspapers, and he secretly funded derailments of racist legislation. His environment forced him to advocate activism only in secret, but Washington understood the fundamental flaws of accommodationism. With the onset of the First World War, the early 1920s brought mass migration of African Americans to northern cities such as Detroit, Chicago, and New York, igniting a period known as the Harlem Renaissance. Being in the North introduced blacks to vocal activists such as Du Bois and organizations intent on change, like the NAACP. The Second World War also pushed blacks toward Du Bois. World War II was a conflict fundamentally rooted in human rights. There were a lot of, I guess you'd say, more liberal whites who became increasingly uncomfortable with the, the racial segregation because increasingly it looked to them like, well, what's going on in the South it looks a lot like what's going on in Nazi Germany. This convergence of widespread sociological reevaluation of America heightened tensions. Realigned under the leadership of Du Bois, Black started to trust the strategy of political activism. The United States would need just one act of defiance in Montgomery to be launched into a revolution. The day after Du Bois' death, his impact on the civil rights movement was recognized at the March on Washington. It is incontrovertible that at the dawn of the 20th century, his was the voice that was calling to you to gather here today in this cause. Tactics of the movement's activist leaders proved the antiquity of Washington's accommodationism. Non-cooperation with evil is as much a moral obligation as is cooperation with good. They have begged the white man for freedom, and every time, anytime you beg another man to set you free, you will never be free. These leaders organized sit-ins, boycotts, freedom rides, and other forms of agitating protests. People say violence doesn't cause, doesn't help anything, or like it's a non-violent protest. People often ignore those. If there's a fire, then people pay attention. That's what Dr. King found. If there was a calm protest, no one watched. But when everything went south, kids getting blown down the street with water hoses or dogs out, Oh, now, now the nation watches. As white support began to build in favor of racial equality, Du Bois' dream came closer to fulfillment. Although Washington's leadership did not lead to these advances, his motives can be understood. Booker T. Washington's gradualist approach has to be thought of in conjunction with the day-to-day -day type of terror that he was experiencing in the South that perhaps Du Bois was not experiencing on that magnitude in the North. But today, these threats are far less prevalent. To foster a generation ready to combat injustice, the youth must be motivated to take action. I'm trying to inspire another generation of young people to get out there and push and stand up and speak up and speak out and get in the way the same way that my generation got in the way. Get in trouble. Good trouble, necessary trouble. In a safer northern environment, Du Bois was able to lead African Americans toward direct action activism using the power of his own newspaper. Ultimately, this allowed Du Bois to leave a legacy that truly advanced and continues to advance a nation. Many are saying during these last few weeks and months that this is a moment when the aspirations, the ideas, the dreams, and hopes of Dr. Du Bois have become the victorious battle cry of a whole people. We fully agree with this estimate. In fact, you are here with us now more than ever before. 